Greetings. Hello. My name is Donita. I'm back for another episode of Between Us Foods. Claps, claps, claps. Oh. <laughs> um, today we're going to be talking about um, female dancers in the dance community. I have very special guests today. Um, but before we get started, please follow us on um, Instagram. Subscribe to this YouTube channel. We are now on Spotify, so check Whoa. us out on there. Um, and yeah, so Between Us Foods, let's talk about it. Uh, before we get started, we do have some very special guests today. Um, these are my friends, my fellow dancers in the community, um, staff members here at the studio. Uh, we have Louisa, we have Gabby, and we have Phoebe. Woohoo! Hello! Hello. Hi. Welcome, welcome! I'm so glad you guys are here. If you can't already tell, it's a it's an all-female panel. Um, that's because our topic what? is about female dancers in the community. Um, so before we get started with my questions, let's go ahead and sp speak about um, like who you are and what you, what you do here at the studio. Let's start with Larissa. My name's Larissa. I teach Urban 2 on Saturdays. Dope, dope. I'm Gabby. I am part co-owner, and I guess I dance here as well. Randomly, mm -hmm. I hide in the back. <laughs> She's also at the front a lot. And the front. <laughs> In yes. the very back of the studio. <laughs> I'm Phoebe. I teach Urban One on Mondays. Awesome. Yes. Yeah, so these guys have been here um, for a while since the get go, pretty much. Um, but you know, before that, we we did start dancing kind of at the same time together. But let's see. I've already spoke a lot about when I started to dance. When, when I started to dance, but um, Phoebe, when did you start dancing? When did you get into the dance community? Oh, into the community. Um, mm -hmm. I actually got invited by Gino DeLitt. Mm -hmm. um, Everyone did. To, <laughs> <laughs> um, he had his own team called Gut Beaters Family, and it was basically people from the uh, VIP and friends. Um, yeah, pretty much just friends, friends and on a team together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> and. Um, He's who brought me into the scene, and after that, I was on VIP. So that's how, kind of how I started in the community. Mm -hmm. And my first performance was Prelude, actually. No, no, it was Collaboration. What year? It was Collaboration, uh, I think it was 2010. That Yay. was my first show. That's kind of when I started crazy. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. crazy. Cool. What about you, Gabby? Um, I started in high school, like a lot of people, I feel like. Um, I started with API, which was the Asian Pacific Islanders Club, but it was in Tracy. So in the previous, I guess, episode, I mentioned that, yeah, I'm not from San Jose. I'm from Tracy, the Central Valley. So there was really no scene out there. Um, and then that was in 2004. And then when I graduated high school in 08, um, I came out here and I started taking class, I guess, at Infinity Dance over in, I guess, Cottle Road, San Jose. Um, and that's where I met um, Jeffro, who was on Rossum, or had <sighs> Jeffro. Yeah, who had <laughs> Rossum at the time. And then I kind of just inched my way through that. But even when I was in Tracy, I was like watching a lot of grainy 240 quality <laughs> like videos. Like I was watching Phenometry and like just trying to learn from them or even like um, I remember learning like Lando's pieces through like online Ooh, Lando. Um, so it wasn't until really I moved out here that I really started getting into the urban dance community um, again competing with um, Rossum and then later on with Chocolate Factory for a good like how long was I in CF like eight years yeah oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah a good good portion of your life what mm -hmm. about you Larissa? I started I want to say like end of eighth grade into freshman year I was creeping into dance on my own uh, by taking classes, and uh, the first class I took was Bam Martin's Colorado Road. Dude. It was a um, the one of the Swan Shops, and yeah, oh that was a God, really dude, hard class. <laughs> hard <laughs> class to get in for my first yeah, time. I didn't take that class, yeah. <laughs> but his footwork is yeah. really fast at that time, and so I would just started taking classes on my own. I didn't know about the whole community aspect until I saw Battle of the Tribes, and that's when I found MVP, and then I aud auditioned for MVP, and then everything just flew on from there. Dope. Yeah. So, um, Phoebe, you were saying that you joined the community in 2000, or like with 
with gut beaters um mm-hmm. did you did you already dance before that yeah mm-hmm. actually i was uh dancing in high school at silver creek mm-hmm. and um we were <laughs> t- doing all the um rallies and homecoming and battle of the tribes um fantastics and then i was like one of the main choreographers for my my high school that's dope. and eventually um i won that best female dancer <laughs> um oh, in the yearbook the so <laughs> So that's the superlatives, yeah. yeah. Should have the award here. <laughs> no, right? I'm not. wondering if, if uh, okay, never mind. <laughs> Maybe I do. What? I, I want to do one. Take one. I gotta look at my award. I gotta look at my award. You get an award. Um, so when you guys first started, you know, dancing, just go, like going into the competition life, I guess, or just the community, Mm -hmm. did you have any female role models that you looked up to, Um, whether it was like on media or even nearby in your family even? For example, for me, I really looked up to, um, the first person was Amy Lucas. She was like my Mm -hmm. number one female dancer that I was like, wow, she's amazing. She's as good as these male dancers. She was mm-hmm. on Gen 2 back in like 2006, 2007. And I also like Gigi Torres, looked up to her, um, Galen Hooks. Mm-hmm. And then um, there's this one girl, I think she's a little bit underground. She, her name is Monica Reyes. If I could, I'm gonna pull up the video that I've been, I watch all the time. But um, she was she was on she auditioned for Pussycat Dolls eventually. It's like a weird thing, but I really liked her because she was good. She was very versatile in her dance style. But those were kind of like my female role models, like in in YouTube, you know. Yeah. And then I had like my family, like my cousin danced. Um, she was a really good dancer. She did all of the high school rallies as well. So I'm just like, oh, oh I want to do that. That looks fun, you know. That looks like, you know, growing up in a Filipino. Co- family like there's a lot of like performances a lot in family parties so i i've always been like oh like they're doing this dance like i want to do that too type thing Mm -hmm. so those for me were my role models did you guys have any when you guys first started Mm, yeah i mean i i definitely looked up to gg like I don't know if you guys remember Essence, right? Mm-hmm. So oh, then, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Apes, Go back. April yeah. Rodriguez yes. was mm-hmm. up there for me. Um, also, of course, Mari, even because mm-hmm. like I was really into watching like Funk's videos. Um, the whole go ahead piece, like oh, yeah, oh, that one. dude, yeah, that was the one. And because like they, 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 WSPA? well, yeah, at the time, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, and then like it's just crazy because seeing them dance like that, I was like, okay, so girls are allowed to move like a little more whatever they called it hip hop at the time you know like um it was a lot as like i was always thinking that i have to dance super like you know (laughs) but i was like dude she's moving like that i'm down with that um and then also uh who was it um there was one more oh uh tracy sealer oh when it was choreo cookies at the time but then i remember watching the videos i'm like dude she's dope Mm -hmm. but she looks like a silent assassin and i like (laughs) those type of females (laughs) yeah what about you phoebe um definitely Gigi and mari were high Mm. up there for me um one of the like game changing videos that i i saw was the like a boy video from Gigi torres like a boy yeah yeah. that one was like okay yes i want to be like that. that We are. We will. Like on this little screen. Here's the playlist. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Anyone sure. else you had a like role model as you were growing up? Um. Female well, and... yeah, females. It was, it was just mostly people from the community, and yeah. yeah I don't it, think anyone in my family danced. Like I, I know that people did like cultural dances and stuff, or maybe a different kind of art. But I don't even think, like, in my family, like, I had a female that actually delved into the arts. I mean, unless you count culinary arts, because they could <laughs> bomb with, like... <laughs> yeah, it is an art, so... But, I mean, other than, like, food, I think there was no one really into dance or, um, yeah, arts or, like, anything of the performing stuff. Um, mm-hmm. I think I'm technically the first, quote-unquote. Um, so, yeah, that's really interesting thinking about outside of the dance community, who right. else you are influenced by. Yeah. No. Um, locally, it was um, like the MVP 567 that I danced with a lot. Um, I was considered the rookie of the team, and so I always looked up to all of those girls that I was dancing with 
because I was just like, oh my God, they're so good. Why am I even on this little <laughs> subgroup that they created? Mm -hmm. five, six, seven. Well, no, not really, because it would change. It'd be uh -huh. MVP five, then we add another one, then turn MVP oh. six, just to how many there were of us. Um, so that was in terms of MVP, and then going on to VIP, more locally to Danny and Phoebe, who are captains. <laughs> so I look to, to Danny and Phoebe a lot. Um, in terms of locally, I guess YouTube-wise, it was a lot of Lost Kids and yeah, Funkonometry too, yeah, out in City Dance, because I would go there a lot and take classes. So Ellen Kim, Crystal Mraz, uh, Phoenix, uh, I don't know what name she goes by now. <laughs> I don't know what name she goes by now. <laughs> yeah, she goes by Phoenix. Phoenix. Or Crystal, one of those. Um, but them two, yeah, yeah you, are, you guys already Life said Life them. Life yeah, said the ones that I was gonna say, but those are the ones that weren't touched upon, Ellen and Crystal. Jillian, Mar yeah, we already said Mar yeah. Jillian Myers. When you guys were like, would you when you think about your female role models, what is it about them? I know Gabby already talked about like, mm -hmm. oh, Mari was like uh, dancing something different that's like not sassy, quote unquote, yeah. or femme. Um, yeah. What other things about your role models inspired you, um, other than, yeah, makes me pretty much. <laughs> well, I think like essence, right? Uh, yeah, it was mm -hmm. like they all were like really uh, strong female choreographers, and so mm -hmm. I think that was really cool. Um, I remember early on when I first started dancing, I really wanted to um, make choreo for the competitions. Um, mm -hmm. But then I remember like specifically like I always felt like my pieces wouldn't make it because I don't know if it's a mental thing, again, personal experience, but I always thought like my pieces weren't strong enough to make it to the sets. Um, and that could be a number of factors. I don't. I wouldn't say it's like because I'm a woman or whatever necessarily. I think it was just like I look to I guess essence of like if they're making choreography, and they're like putting together these freaking six sets. Like I could do one too. So I think in a sense like I looked up to them because they were like, of course they're female, but they're also choreographers as well, um, and they were super confident doing it. And they were doing like pieces and different songs that I wouldn't have thought of. Um, and again, we're just kind of like popular at the time mm -hmm. so yeah definitely I think um, I looked up to my female role models because I could relate to them a lot I think uh, Amy Lucas I looked up to her because like she would always hold down center sometimes you know and mm -hmm. I that was a big thing to me when I would look at performances on stage you know you look at who's center um, I would notice that like okay like okay like piece one two four five it's like male 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 and then there's this one piece in the middle that this girl is like at the center you know what i mean mm -hmm. i was like and i like that a lot um it just like um inspired me that like she can keep up with the guys pretty much as much i think i was also thinking nowadays i think my female role models not change but it, it added i definitely look up to sora yang with the movement yeah. that she's doing mm -hmm. um I know she's a big advocate about um, being included um, in the scene, but in the conversation, pretty much. So, mm -hmm. yeah. But anyways, what about you guys? What about your role models? Like, inspired you? Your female role models? <laughs> um, I liked that they were very versatile. That they could be feminine if they wanted to. They mm -hmm. could be masculine if they wanted to. Goofy and whatnot. Just very well rounded in all aspects. And then going back to Ellen again, she taught a lot in SF, so I took a lot of her classes. So not only was she a great dancer, choreographer on the screen, but she was also a great person mm. in real life meeting her. Mm -hmm. um, fan, oh man, this is embarrassing. But I would fangirl over her, and when I'd see her, I'd give her like little notes. And be like, to Ellen, thank you for blah, blah, blah. And like every time I saw her, and she was really nice about it, and she would remember me too when I would see her because I guess I take her classes often. I guess. <laughs> I'd come up so to her. Cool. Yeah. Done. <laughs> <laughs> Phoebe? Um, yeah, I, I agree with you um, about the whole like people holding down center, and that's what mm -hmm. I liked about Sori Yang when she killed, I think it was John Haw's Get Out of Your Mind piece. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think Here's it was that, that piece, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and you know, just seeing them like attack center and uh, pretty much like really in a very, I don't know like masculine in a masculine way, way yeah and 
it's, I don't know. <laughs> I, it just it made me want to feel that way and be, be center and experience mm -hmm. that type of like hype on stage yeah. and yeah. I mean, personally, I, I feel like I, I'm more tomboyish, I would say. Like, I was grew up kind of like, I hung out with a lot of the guys and type stuff. So for me, um, you know, being able to like, I don't know, dance versatile, like different styles, different, I guess, facets and performing different types of pieces was super important to me. And like, I didn't want to be just like, because I'm a girl, I do one thing. Um, I thought it was really cool that to see like Sora mm -hmm. just really like elevate um, I guess females and stuff um, in their dance community. So I just think that style is really cool and that she just made other people who are small really exciting. Yeah, <laughs> and I really liked her uh, her Urban Paradise set too. That was really yeah, good. Yeah, all females. Though. Yeah. The mm -hmm. colors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Colored yeah. sweatsuits. Mm -hmm. Were you guys there? I was, yeah. Yeah, I was there. <laughs> morning show. <laughs> I know. Or like morning show. Or, you know, <laughs> it's always a cultural phenom when, when we all go through the same show. <laughs> um, so I think nowadays there's probably a lot more people that we look up to. I even look up to some people that I see in our dance classes, you know, mm. and I'm like, yo, that girl's killing it. Like, you know, um, she she's like a no face, no name person. But like, I admire her because she's like up there in in like the select not select group but the groups mm -hmm. voluntarily you know mm -hmm. and she's mm -hmm. like trying to do it um and people like that especially in pieces that are predominantly like masculine you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying and then you'll see like a female go up there and like you know i can kill this you know mm. so <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> vivian Shut of up. course <laughs> that's like a role model in, in many ways yeah. <laughs> um but you know speaking about our journey as we continued in our um, dance journey, like I, we all pretty much were in a com comp competitive team, right? Uh, whether, whether, whatever goal you had, did you guys have a time where being a female dancer like benefited you or hindered you in your journey? Hmm. You know what I mean? Um, for instance, like, you know, Gabby, you're talking about pieces, and I had the same thought too. Like, I would mm -hmm. submit a piece, and like, most of the time, it wouldn't get picked. It would get picked, but it got picked because I partnered up with someone that was an oh, like collabs. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And um, and even then, but anyways, it, it was in the back of my head always. Like you know, like all all my captains are male. All of my mm -hmm. um, male choreographer. I mean, sorry, all of my choreographers are male. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And here's me trying to like submit a piece, and I'm just like. I know there's various reasons why, like like you said. Yeah, it's you know? not necessarily just that. Yeah, or but like, not at all. I don't exactly, know. Yeah, I, we you don't can't know. Really say. But I just felt like um, that was a, a that was a time where I even want I wanted to prove it even more. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Because it's like I need to. There was more at stake because I wanted to put this pieces piece in this set, not only because just to be like a good choreographer, but also because I want to be the first female choreographer in oh. this organization you know right, what i mean right. like so that was like something that really motivated me mm. um in terms of that like in what about you guys for your dance teams and dance journey um i think that everything for me has been unexpected when i started dancing i literally just wanted to dance and so the whole choreographing aspect was new to me mm -hmm. and so i didn't want to get chosen <laughs> I was like, I don't even want to make choreo. <laughs> it's a fun thing to do at that time, but I was like, mm, it's not my thing right now. But unexpectedly, I got chosen to like teach one of my pieces, and then unexpectedly again, I got chosen to be a part of this sub subgroup. And um, I don't feel like being a female really hindered that. Mm -hmm. um, it was more so, I guess, mindset maybe, because as a female, I feel like we are wired to think more and be more analytical about our decisions and we'll create a pro and con pro and con list within like five <laughs> seconds of why yeah. I why I should or should not do this certain thing. Yeah. Uh, what was the other part of the question? <laughs> um, I mean if it didn't it was, hinder you. Yeah, then like you know you. Yeah, you know, just was there any experience where you just being a female dancer was very apparent, like it either benefited you or hindered you. Oh, on a, okay. Well, on a less serious note, mm -hmm. what hindered what hindered was my hair. 
Oh, yeah. Oh, so, no, no, when I, started, I, I agree with you. Yeah. yeah. When I started dancing, I danced with my hair down mostly, and I used it as a defense mechanism or uh -huh. like a shield, to, and it purposely covered my face, and I wanted that to happen. Cause like yeah, you can't see me. I can't see you. I can't see anything. Yeah, I'm just gonna dance. To be honest, we always have that extra limb, which is our hair. There was you know a phase I mean? where like, everyone had. Well, I still have it. So like, there was things. like the side bangs. That's why I'm wearing you know this right now. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know for you guys, but I always have to think about okay, how am I gonna do my my hair because I don't want it all over my face. My wig. My wig. I know. I was thinking of weave. That's why. No, but yeah, how am I gonna wear so my my hair? You know, because I want to succeed, right? And I don't want it to hinder me at all. Like it's kind of weird. I'm sure, like guy, I know a guy that had long hair too. Probably had the same. Thing. I've I've been <laughs> on a squad where like, dude, like this girl's weave came out. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not gonna say who. I'm just saying like, you know, make sure that. She like clipped in, in and yeah. weaved yeah. in, but yeah, earrings. I'm sure we always know. Like you gotta make sure your earrings come. Those always Cured. fly off in class. Yeah, <laughs> see stuff like that. Even like makeup, you know. Yeah. Uh, it's such an extra thing to stress yeah, about. Yeah, like at comps, yeah. like we take heck of long. <laughs> oh, like we like make sure the girls have an hour to get ready. <laughs> I would actually no opt out. No more Yeah, I'd opt out because I didn't know how to do it. Here's the thing. There's one competition where we were like, okay, let's review our scores and one of the scores was like oh girls need to wear more makeup i was like yeah, yeah. i remember that yeah, yeah. i was like oh, yeah, that i got that okay. <laughs> <laughs> i was crazy. like how is that it's just an I added that was layer like, you know yeah. there's yeah. so many layers already to competing and then mm -hmm. adding on like our makeup and what to do with our hair like you know it's just it something else have to do with the dancing at all mm -hmm. right it's just the way you look dude did we get accessory. marked points for no makeup sometimes it yeah, does happen do. like that yeah i know like it okay. adds to a performance like you know especially uh -huh. if it's like a, extras like a costume mm -hmm. you know it's mm -hmm. part of the set but like to be like she needs more eyeliner. Minus one. <laughs> I don't she know. Do it doesn't pop out enough. <laughs> They're not on fleek. <laughs> I think it just said something like, oh, it needs to be more staged. Like staged. That's true, though. I mean, I was in drama, so mm -hmm. it's like, you have your eyes pop. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. you can make it, fl you yeah. know, you're, it fleshes out your face and yeah. stuff. But, Phoebe, do you have any experiences you wanted to share? Um, Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, was on, I was on VIP for like eight years. Yeah. So I ex pretty much experienced my whole like adult life on that team. That's so it was crazy. so like, yeah, a crazy long, thinking about it. Like, like a whole generation. I pretty much of learned dance. everything. Like, I don't know, I grew up in that team. So mm -hmm. it was like learning and a whole learning experience, you know, becoming a woman and like, <laughs> um, yeah. eventually becoming the director and like right. having to manage That's the great. whole team being like the last one standing out of my whole um, generation. Wow. It's crazy, you know, having having had to go through that and like yeah. having to work with it. You know, I think being a female leader was, definitely had its ups and downs, mm -hmm. but also it made me grow so much. Like it was my biggest growing um, time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, what's, what's one of the biggest challenges as I guess, cause you both were directors, right? Right, both mm -hmm. of you. Shorter amount of time though. Yeah, <laughs> is longer. Yeah, yeah. How is how is that in general, or more so like what's one of the challenges then? Um, I, th I think attendance was was kind of hard. Yeah. yeah. Um, because we had practices like three times a week, and I think it was hard for people to make one of those days. I think it was a Sunday, so it was yeah, yeah it was kind of inconsistent <laughs> and kind of like it didn't really help with you know rehearsing and mm. getting things uh, done. So. Mm -hmm. I think that was, I think it was just attendance because people on dance teams are always like having their own separate lives too. So mm. it's, the scheduling was always kind of the hardest to, uh, obstacle mm -hmm. to go, overcome. Yeah, I feel it. I think um, it's just, I think nowadays we notice, I think when you guys first started, did you guys see more male dancers or female dancers in your, mm -hmm. in general, like in your team or like at school or whatever? I think it was male. More male? Yeah, and when it comes uh, into mind of who I look up to, uh, it was June Komado and like Lando mm -hmm. Wilkins, mm -hmm. Jed Florano, the whole like most wanted 
scene, mm -hmm. those people like first came into mind, but then you, s you know, we're switching it off to female. Mm -hmm. So it would be like Ellen Kim, and I had to think a little bit harder about the female, um, female pool to choose from, because right. there right. is a lot, but there still isn't too much, and mm -hmm. the ratio between males and females is a lot greater for the males, and that, yeah. like, the list is probably longer for them. Do you think that it's more prominent in the urban community? You know, because if we flip the switch and, because you guys heard about the whole boys dance too, um, movement, yeah, right? Oh, right. Like there's that whole thing where like boys can dance too, you know, and then it's kind of just interesting to see like in in urban, yeah. there is predominantly a male presence, but then in in outside of that through the world globally, they see dance more of as a female. Thing. Yeah, that's yeah. you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So definitely when I, I think in the teams that I've been in, like there's always more male dancers mm -hmm. in the urban dance, dance scene, you know, like there's all, I'm always one of like one of six <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and one of the six females in the team out mm -hmm. of like 30 people, you mm -hmm. know, I'm sure you can yeah, attest no, to that. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, why do you think that is like, why I'm sure there's a lot of female dancers mm -hmm. out there. Um, and again, like globally, it's known to be more of a female thing, but in urban, mm. it's kind of switched. You know what I mean? I think it's maybe starting at an early age when you think about putting your children into dance, the first style you'll think of is ballet right. or modern jazz. Never, I'm gonna put my kid into hip hop. Mm -hmm. They find hip hop later in life, but mm -hmm. it's never the first thing that they're exposed to. That's true. That's a good way to put it, definitely. It's interesting because I guess um, working the kids program here at the studio, um, it's it's another studio almost, <laughs> by the way, like between four to like seven is like, we're like flipped into something else. Mm -hmm. um, but I guess it's interesting because yeah, you'll, you'll, I'll get a lot of parents that come in and be like, I want, I want my kid to do ballet, right? And that's fine. You know, nothing mm -hmm. wrong with it at all. In fact, like, I feel like everyone should take it. Um, but I found lately, maybe it's because of the parents that we're getting into, they're starting to be like, you know, later 30s and mm -hmm. like they're a little more hip. I don't know. <laughs> so like, yeah, they come yeah. in and say like, yeah. we're, I want a breaking class for my girl. Yeah. And I was like, just okay. Just dance. They're a little uh -huh. bit more forward thinkers. <laughs> yeah. I, think, I think it's just the progression of the community. Yes, like, I don't I think agree. it's necessarily like, um, or just progression of dance. Yeah. yeah. Um, being in larger platforms um, and then just seeing, again, maybe like, ABDC and seeing yeah. like females scene, dancing all these versatile styles yeah. and mm -hmm. not just ballet and mm -hmm. jazz or your typical classical styles, um, just delving more into different stuff. So I think now it being on mainstream and then, you know, as, as our generation gets older and has their own next generation, <laughs> yeah. um, I think the parents are now like, okay, let's start my kid early with hip hop. And I feel like that's really cool because then I think a lot of our kids are mostly female, even oh. though we offer um, like jazz, ballet, tap, or actually not tap, we will be. <laughs> but, uh, um, and hip hop, like uh, I think our breaking class for uh, kids has mostly female. Yeah, oh, and that's I like cool. that. So that's really mm -hmm. cool. Um, and I think over time it'll continue to grow that way because even with urban now, I do see that there's a lot more females in the classes showing up, especially in urban ones. I don't mm -hmm. know if that's something you guys notice yeah, too. Yeah, there is. Um, but I just know that because when I would be taking class, like mm -hmm. they'd be like, all right, all the girls, and then like, whoosh. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember like specifically, there were classes where there would be no like, yeah, it would be like all girls, and it's like five girls. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It, so I remember there was a point where it's right? less. Yeah. Definitely depends. Yeah. Um, you know, speaking of like classes that, or styles that we were taking before, um, predominantly when I was da dancing, I gravitated more to like the, not feminine styles, but more of the sassy styles. Hmm. And then I started to uh, admire like more of like underground hip hop or, um, yeah type styles old school hip hop you know what i'm saying um and i like that i like both i have both <laughs> like the groovy type of a uh, hip hop style um but i remember i was always casted in like a sassy female um piece you know and like i have a polynesian background so i i have like I was trained to be very graceful and stuff. So like, mm. I, like my main critique when I was uh, in my dance journey was you need to be more grounded. You need to be hit harder, you know mm. what I'm saying? And I'm like, I understand that, but um, you know, so like as a 
it's just crazy to me if in my experience experience i was just i knew i was like oh, i'm gonna get into this piece because it's like femme and sassy you know what i mean and they always most of the time they always pick someone else that can hit harder that can like hit you know males but it's pretty much i can hit like the the hard-hitting pieces if they if that's what you call them you know what i mean mm -hmm. for you guys like what are some stereotypes or like expectations as a female that were brought upon you guys just in your journeys um as you go through hmm. well for me i was definitely in the the harder harder hitting pieces because i yes. yeah i didn't have much of one like of a yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> we got one of those and yeah these. I was never really in the, in the girl pieces because my style was more masculine. So, yeah, I was never picked for like the feminine feminine pieces. <laughs> I would actually choreograph like the more hard hard hitting pieces sometimes. Dope. So. And how was that? Like it was it was cool because I, I I liked it. You know, it made me feel like I was in the zone and like in my comfort zone. So, mm. yeah. It always depends on my comfort zone too. What about you, Larissa? I'm still thinking, <laughs> Gabby. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, you know, some of the notes I got as a dancer, and, and again, personally, um, so I, yeah, I don't hit as hard. <laughs> um, like, I think I, I do better generally with the more flowy stuff, um, and it just so happens to be that uh, some of the more flowy stuff is, I guess, considered femme. <laughs> um, so I, I think that, that would be the one thing I would say as far as stereotype. Um, but yeah, every now and then I'll do the harder hitting stuff and I would just, I don't know, <laughs> I get so nervous because I'm like, this is not so, who I am. I'm just like, yeah. I don't maybe know, it's very just chill person. Style, yeah. I, think, I think it's maybe personality, Yeah. right? Because like, I sometimes forget, like, of course I'm dancing for me, but it's a performing art. So like, if you're going to be putting yourself in another hat almost, or like being an actress, right? Like you're, you're putting yourself in this zone of like, all right, I'm gonna be like this in this piece, you know, mm -hmm. but that's not who I am. It's just acting or yeah. it's yeah. just performing. I love yeah. like when they're like, oh, there's gonna be a gangster piece. I'm like, yes. You know, I, mean? <laughs> I always want to like I try to be a gangster tap into that energy. <laughs> exactly. It's but fun. I'm like, you know, the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> I don't know. I right, think the closer, obviously, it is to your personality, the easier it's going to be for you to perform naturally. Yes, right? I agree. So mm -hmm. naturally, I wasn't like into the harder stuff, but I would do them. I think it has definitely changed from when I started and now. So expectations back then, uh, just being able to hit hard, because there really wasn't feminine stuff in MVP. Like everything was really hard hitting. You just had to deal with it. And uh, now Full strength. <laughs> yeah. Like that was expected of you to just hit hard. And I guess because like no matter we, if you're a girl or what. Yeah, yeah okay. and I think because we were young too, I don't know, like taboo, we're not trying to expose children mm -hmm. to more feminine and booty popping uh, and stuff like mm. that. It wasn't a thing to do because we were just too thing. young. Mm -hmm. So that's like I guess age and gender, but nowadays, being older, you kind of expected to know how to twerk already. <laughs> I still don't really know how, and um, <laughs> and like no, and then also heels. I guess mm -hmm. knowing mm -hmm. that, how to walk in heels or take a heels class and do all that stuff already. Mm -hmm. But it's a learning process too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and I can't yet ish but learning we can eventually yeah. yeah i mean not everyone's born to walk in heels yeah although say is. yes except her <laughs> maybe honest marshall i would love to take came out classes. in heels would you guys take a heels <laughs> class or have you already yes. yeah we're taking heels classes. you have yeah. we took one together yeah and she came in late and she still I, I went to ross <laughs> or was that ross yeah so like day was teaching i was working front desk so i couldn't like you know, I had to wait till everyone checked in, and I was like, "All right, I'm gonna go to buy heels." So I went to Ross, like literally, like two stores down. Yeah. And then I came back and I. Took How the was class. that heels class experience for you guys? It tastes cool. She's it really sick. You yeah. guys took it together. Yeah, 
Um, I just had to play catch up. Yeah. And that's always stressful. Don't do that. <laughs> come on, to, come to class on time, if you can. <laughs> tip number one. Yeah. yeah, tip number one, please. I've taken, um, was it Sandy's heels class? I think that was the only heels class I've ever taken. Mm. Um, and I want to take more. I honestly want to take more because I think it's fun. It's not that, like, I think it's necessary. I think mm. it's just a new experience mm -hmm. that even males should take, you know? Anybody. Like, anybody should take because it's, it's art. Exactly. There's something <laughs> about, art. like, dancing in heels heels that's like there's there's more there's a technique to it yeah so um phoebe you take the same class no no, no i didn't i oh. actually we had a old vip person her name is ashlyn brennan she's from the uk oh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah she yeah, taught yeah. us um at vip and she was a guest teacher i know what a bevel is <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah, the only, that's the bevel. only one i know it's a, you know you have their Thanks, Ashlyn. <laughs> yeah, I think it's cool to even do like across the floors, you know. Yeah, uh, like simple walk. Just just walking walking in them, because then, you know, you could use that anywhere. <laughs> yeah. There's a, um, when we had twerk shop, I remember the teacher, he would always be like, you know, twerk shop is more than just learning how to twerk and shake your butt. This is about confidence, performance, like, mm -hmm. you know, like being okay with your body, like all that yeah. stuff. And I was like, I think that's a great thing to advocate. Um, yeah. To like any type of style, not just twerk shop, not just heels, you know what I'm saying? Mm hmm. Um, but speaking of, you know, being advocates and stuff, mm -hmm. now that we're in this space and we have a little bit more um, resources, like, what do you think, what can we do to inspire, I mean, not that there's generally a big problem with female dancers and the mm -hmm. younger generation, but I think, you know, just uh, increasing the pool of, like, female choreographers, you know, like, how can we inspire them to, like, go for it and just, um, just basically keep up with the guys, you know what I mean? Like, so far, you guys are only two teachers right now. <laughs> I know, I gotta hold, I gotta hold down. <laughs> but yeah, like, what do you, what, what words do you guys have to say for, like, the community, like, the, the female dancers out there? You guys are the teachers. I'm, I'm <laughs> taking the class. Yeah. <laughs> You real I think we always say this, you gotta push each other, but like literally push people in, not verbally, but physically kinda too. Because mm -hmm. I'll like I'll try to pull in some people and like, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, come on, you really gotta like get in there. Yeah. And just um building up that mindset again because we as females do think a lot we about do overthink things. Yeah. And I think that might be the oh, <laughs> <laughs> like the biggest difference I guess um, what I've noticed males don't really th think they just do so that's why it comes so they're impulsive <laughs> but not just in a come, bad way yeah, yeah. yeah. but it's just easy cause when it's like oh hey let's just have a any five alright I'm, I'm one of five let me go yeah so <laughs> let's like do that. yeah no, hey one of five up. you I'm gonna push you in there a little oh. bit but having that balance of also being the representative to show like, hey, it's okay, because I'm doing it too, mm -hmm. but also let me step back and now it's your turn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it's great when, when I was starting seeing other female dancers in class and doing select groups. I think I'm more inclined because it's like, it's just something that draws me. It's like, you know, there's something about like, we got each other's back type of thing and mm. like i think we we just need to do more more do that more often like in classes and stuff um what do you think phoebe um yeah i had a, a girl in my class the other day she's like she wasn't really getting it and it was kind of hard to like help her in a sense without you know like disrupting the class or the flow of the class so I kind of had to indirectly target her weakness in, in that class because it was a, cl a quiet one too, like no one was really speaking. So mm -hmm. um, it was kind of hard for people to you know, voice what they, what they needed. Mm. So I kind of had to like do it myself, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, throughout one of the, the, one of the run throughs, I could see her like kind of messing up, but I had to hype her up in a, in a sense to where like, yeah, you got it, you know, you got it, you can do it. So I think just little things like that, you know, uh, when you see someone that's like super, like, I'm not getting this at all, I'm frustrated. Mm -hmm. Like, 
you 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 feel the vibe in class, but also you're you're as a teacher you need to change it, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. So in doing like that hype, hyping her up, um, I I I could tell in the next run through she was more confident, mm-hmm. you know, comfortable. more com- comfortable like with my support. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, also like in class two, voicing out, it's okay to mess up and it's okay mm-hmm. to make mistakes. And this is what class is for, um, to make mistakes. And you're, it's not going to be perfect. Um, and just you know, voicing out that it's okay, it's okay that you're going through this, but you got it, you can do it. And then um, it was really nice seeing uh, the last run through she did, and she was, she actually did, she she pulled through and she pushed, it and she got the choreography. So yeah. I think. Little things like that, Mm -hmm. you know. um, I like that advice, not just for females, but for just anyone mm -hmm. struggling to. Yeah. um, Maybe it's just for females. Mm -hmm. We need a little extra Mm -hmm. because maybe in the society we're always wired to be, you know, we were always oppressed. And and so, like, now we want to give them the space. Like, you can take up space. Mm -hmm. You know, it's okay to take (laughs) up space pretty much. Mm -hmm. Um, Anything to add, Phoebe? I'm sorry, Gabby. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Chloe, right? Yes. Um, yeah, I think it's just continuing, like on a grander scale, mm-hmm. right? Like not just uh, classes, but uh, always going for the opportunities and providing them if you have the platform to provide them. Um, I think as being part studio owner, uh, if you guys didn't already know, there's three other female uh, board members. So we actually have a pretty good ratio, three on three, woo. Um, so there's three guys and three girls. Um, and I think the synergy, which is cool, is that we're keeping these things in mind, um, like and how we can improve. I think in general, I've been noticing there are a good amount of females that come through the studio now. Um, and they typically are more like, they're a little more quiet, but um, you know, I think to help improve that is continually uh, taking class from each other as females um, and also encouraging each other verbally um, and just being up there more confidently um, in classes outside of it, you know, just continuing to uh, uplift the choreographers who have goals of being like choreographers, you know, because not everyone, yeah, like not everyone has like the goal of putting themselves out there like that. And I think that's what we always have to respect as a studio as well. But if you guys do have like the aspiration and really like go for it, all industry and stuff like that, um, it's again just continuing to provide more opportunities and hopefully you know like you fall into something that you like or not fall into it, but you get something and earn something that you like, um, female or not, yeah, you be mm-hmm. you know like I don't know, just kidding. Mm-hmm. <laughs> exactly. I think um, I just want. To, to sum it all up, basically, like there's you, either if you want to just dance, if you want to teach as a goal, mm-hmm. or if you are just trying to try something new, pretty much, um, the first step is just stepping outside of your comfort zone. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And just putting yourself out there and being vulnerable. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it's scary. It's scary to put yourself against people, like things that are uncertain you know like um but we can tell from these two that if you just go for it like you'll you'll get there like all it takes is hard work Mm -hmm. um so you know like for the community out there like i definitely advocate for female dancers female choreographers like Mm -hmm. i think that's the main thing is like female choreographers just needs to really don't be shy put yourself out there you Mm -hmm. know what i mean like as much as possible Mm because we you need that voice and i guess as a studio owner, like Gabby's saying, like, um, just continuing to give the platform exactly, like, and just more opportunity as much as we can. Give that voice to um, them, and you know, represent as much as we can. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I think we're still in a very positive s- stage. You know, we're growing, and it's definitely better than when we first started. Yeah, right? we yeah, have more sure. female role models now. So I think we just need to keep going. Um, don't give up and stuff, and just stay resilient. Like. It, there's up and downs and stuff in every type of journey. So um, I think 
That was a great discussion. Um, oh, we're going to end oh there today. God. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, say <laughs> no, 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 oh. please say it. Oh, okay. You have the space. Okay, cool, cool, cool. I just wanted to say that a lot of times it really seems as though it's easier said than done because we got, we already know we should be, we should work hard. We should be determined. We should believe in ourselves. We should be confident. We all mentally know that, but it's really just hard to do. And what I've noticed, what has helped me is that, um, knowing that the only thing holding me back is myself. Mm -hmm. Everybody is so supportive in this community. And whenever um, you go do a run through and then someone tells you good job, we kind of just, we don't accept it. We just like, no, I must I know, stop. yeah. I, just, I, no, I like, can't nah. take compliments well. Right, yeah, that's another thing too. Like just to accept the confident, accept the compliment and take that as, something to uplift you as opposed to tearing yourself down like when that. someone mm -hmm. just said you're doing great and you're like no like you really <laughs> are doing great mm -hmm. so so if so if that wasn't true then we they wouldn't even have said it mm -hmm. so um That's a true. big really really big one is just to believe in yourself first because there's there's so many people that believe in you, maybe in the shadows, because we're also very scared to vocalize some of our opinions, mm -hmm. but there's still people lurking around watching you without even knowing it. Mm -hmm. And I would have found people that have ta told me like, oh yeah, I took your class like two, three years ago. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm meeting you now, like yeah. officially, like that is so cool to know that people from like the past now are like coming into the scene and that's just really uplifting, and I'm starting to accept compliments, and it's helping a lot in terms of my own confidence, because confidence has played a really big factor mm -hmm. into it. This whole thing, yeah. yeah, everything. Definitely, I believe in that. Yeah, I think I think you're right. I agree with like accepting, celebrating yourself, pretty, yeah. pretty much. Um, that was great. I think if you guys have anything else to add, then we can wrap it up right there. Thank you so much. Um, if you guys have anything else to add, you can always um, reach out to us on Instagram. I'm talking to the audience, by the way. Um, oh, hello. <laughs> you know, like comments. I hope you guys like this um, discussion. We're very passionate about this topic, and I hope to see more of you in our classes and taking a step up and um, basically taking up space. Celebrate yourself. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. Yay! That's it! Yay. Bye. 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 Bye.